All right, so here we are at the moment, Zen. We're going to deep dive on this a little bit here. This is by founder Jack Levin. And of course, uh, the price at the moment, five zeros, 3,108. This is one of our, uh, our free uh, airdrop free claims. It's a free claim, really. Uh, it's free to mint, but of course, you have to pay the blockchain fee. Uh, and you also have to pay the claim fee when, it, when the mint phase ends. Um, so, uh, for example, if you did a mint phase for 100 days, you're going to get a certain amount of Zen. Uh, something like 60,000 a day approximately, uh, and uh, then you'll have to claim it as well at the end. Now, obviously, around about uh, 12 quay, that's probably going to cost you maybe uh, maybe $3 or so for, for that, and then maybe a dollar dollar fifty or something for the claim or something like that. So uh, you do have to remember you need gas fees for <laughs> for the claim as well. This is on the ETH chain. Now, obviously, they're on 10 chains, so they're trying this uh, a couple of strategies going on here. Uh, now, we've talked about HEX being a store of value, right? That's kind of HEX. Now, Zen is focused on being a medium of exchange, uh, so uh, as opposed to a store value. Um, so you, you you typically design yourself quite differently. You set up the gamification quite differently. And, of course, you promote yourself differently. That's kind of the, the place. Uh, and when you're going to be a medium of exchange, uh, you've got to get everywhere, right? You've got to get you know, all over the place. Uh, so And you've got to build a lot of uh, adapts eventually on it as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so... At the moment, uh, Zen has only been going for what? I can't remember how many days, 74 days, something like that. It's uh, been going for about that long. And uh, people are minting themselves silly, right? Particularly on the Polygon network. It's uh, completely crazy. Can't remember the numbers, but uh, all the early bonuses are gone on Polygon. People are just minting away. Now, I think that the uh, current early bonus on uh, Ethereum is still at 4%. Remember, it starts at 10, 10% goes down to zero. Uh, and of course, I think it takes 10 million uh, uh, different accounts to mint to get down. So every 100,000 goes down by 0.1%. So 10 million gets down to that point. Now, uh, what's the excitement at the moment? Obviously, uh, this is based on what they call a log two function. So it's a kind of a growth fun function. A lot of the inflation is at the beginning. Now, uh, Zen has minted on the ETH chain. So we're going to just uh, stick to the ETH chain, even though there's uh, nine other chains, uh, EVM chains there. Now, there's a couple of themes, of course, before we talk about that is that they're trying the network effect as part of the game vacation. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to watch this play out. I call this a possible play as opposed to a probable play. Um, but of course, I consider it a high quality a possible play and it's getting better uh, by the day. Um, so we're going to talk about that as well. So they're trying the network effect. So they're trying to get uh, as many users as possible to mint uh, with a first principle fair launch. And uh, they're also trying to, so there's no coins held by the team. They have to participate just like everybody else does. So Jax talk, has talked in the past about minting thousands of dollars of ETH uh, to mint all of his coins out and minting every weekend, trying to get them as cheap as possible uh, with the Gwei down under 10 Gwei, that sort of thing. He says he has it automated on his, his uh, Minimars to make sure that it all gets executed at super cheap gas prices. So he's looking at minimizing his costs and maximizing his future yield. So some fascinating things there. The other thing, of course, is that they are going multi-chain. So not only the network effect they're trying to play out, not only using the log growth function, getting the inflation up at the front, not only they're also going multi-chain, right? So they've got 10 chains. Now, the other thing is that um, uh, who, where's, where's this going to go? If it's going to be a medium of exchange, it's going to be that sort of uh, that sort of valuation, uh, then you've got to get applications using it. You've got to get as many people aware of it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but of course, at the beginning, you've also got an issue of high inflation. Uh, so you need to get people attracted. What are people attracted to? Uh, price goes up, right? People like it when the price chart's going up. They want to pay more, right? Uh, I'll pay more for that because the price is going up. And uh, everyone looks, hey, look at that green candle. I'm going after that. That's pretty much the biggest pump mental you can find is a green candle going up uh, with the price direction. Now, obviously, to do that, they had the log function. They're making a lot of inflation. At the moment, there is $2 trillion, uh, in the market, $2 trillion, uh, Zen. That is nothing, folks, uh, because these guys are going to head uh, way higher than that. We're going to look at that in a second. Uh, but they're going to head uh, way higher than that. So uh, let's have a quick look at where the inflation is at the moment, where it's going to. And then we're going to talk about the deflation, which is the big thing happening at the moment and why you see the price chart moving up. Uh, so before we do that, though, let's go into the daily candle and have a look at the whole price chart. And uh, we're going to get rid of all that detail. This is the Zen chart. Looks pretty bad, right? Looks pretty bad. And of course, this is what we expected to see. I don't know if you remember when it first launched, I was almost in tears on, on this channel. Uh, probably the only YouTuber almost breaking out in tears uh, watching people pay uh, for Zen at this price, knowing uh, that there was a log function here and that the inflation was huge at the beginning and people paying this price, it was way up here, uh, you know, a uh, huge price. What was the top of this candle? Just went open, 1.5 cents. On the next day candle, the high was over half a cent and I was almost in tears 
watching people buy this. Like, no, don't do it. Don't do it, I said. And, of course, we saw lots of bots minting. We saw the big exchanges like Mexi, uh playing their games and everything else like that. They control a lot of centralized exchanges, control a lot of the supply. And, of course, uh, down the price came, down the price came. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. And, of course, I can imagine the amount of transfer of wealth here uh, to all, a lot of the wrong players, too. We're getting their money. And, of course, down we came. And here we are. Now, we've had a couple of little pumps since then around uh, Zen NFTs and things like that. And, of course, we've got one now at the moment around the Zen NFT. We're going to deep dive into that in a second. Before we do that, though, let's have a look. So we've had inflation and price crash. Nothing to see there. What was it? That's what we expected. Only people that didn't know what they were talking about, didn't know what they were doing, were paying for the stuff on exchanges. Maybe because they thought it was new and it was hypey. And, of course, they weren't looking at the project. So let's have a quick look at the uh, Zen Turbo dashboard. I've done two videos on this, so you can check that out. Uh, so what do we got here? We've got the total supply of Zen pretty much at $2 trillion at the moment uh, with a market cap value of uh, $6.3 million, total supply value of $6.3 million. Liquid supply is $1.8 trillion at the moment. And, of course, the total state is only $188 billion out of that. And, of course, uh, there's been 14,000 14, ETH used, uh, $18.5 million dollars in gas fees so this has been a criticism but then of course if you think about uh you think about ethereum if you're using tokens of ethereum you're always paying gas uh so you know it's a natural uh, criticism in my view anyway uh they've got all the headline stuff we're just going to go zoom down on the inflation side of things so let's just scroll down here and have a look at that briefly so here are some key numbers here future supply trends so we know we've got two trillion at the moment, and we're only in today, what, 74 or something? I can't remember exactly it's got the day on here, but it's something like that. Um, let me have a look here. Can't see the day, but something like that. Actually, I can just check the chart. Let me do that uh, quickly. Uh, what day is that? So uh, 75, day 75. There we are, day 75. That'll do us. Anyways, let's have a look at the inflation because this is very important to understand the context of this project. At the moment, uh, there are two trillion that is mined. Now, there is a lot of Zen coming out uh, over the next few days. You can see a lot of people have minted short Zen, which means they get a small amount of Zen. You, you, you mint for a short period of time, you get a small amount of Zen. You mint for a long time, you get a lot of amount of Zen. And, of course, we have a lot of these players are still playing the short game, but the short game isn't that profitable at the moment. So if you're doing it at the moment, it's not that profitable. If you did it, uh, 30 days ago that you might be in good profits but if you do it now not very profitable and we can prove that very easily so uh, let's have a look here so we've got at the moment we've got two trillion in the market uh, at the moment we've got people have mined so people have minted stuff they're getting it out in the future from today onwards all the way out to four, day 437 they've got just under 33 trillion uh, that they will be receiving folks so we're going to go from two trillion to at least 33 trillion but it's even bigger than that, folks. It's even bigger than that. Why? Because this is only 75 days of minting. Uh, imagine a whole year of minting. And then by that time, if we extrapolate these numbers, now it's a little bit crude, where we extrapolate, extrapolate these numbers, we get to about 10 trillion in the first year, right? We get 10 trillion in the first year. If we extrapolate this 30, 33 trillion, uh, which is probably not quite accurate because we'll probably have a slightly, we're going to have ups and downs in people minting and maybe a slight decrease from the first, you know, beginning get a lot of minting. It's all a lot of factors playing into that, ETH, gas fees, et cetera. Uh, but we could get to, in a year's time, we could have future mined uh, up at 30% of the total amount expected to mine approximately, right? Because uh, the total amount is an assess estimate there. So the bulk of it comes out within eight years' time. Uh, so at the moment, we've got uh, 32.9 trillion in the mining process. That is 6.4% only of the 512 trillion 512 trillion expected to be mined over uh, the bulk of the, the this contract over eight years uh, pretty much now compare 512 trillion which is the end game inflation uh, to ship for example ship as about 590 trillion with about half of that held centrally uh, by the ship community there that is pretty crazy so 512 so you can sort of see it's in that order of magnitude and of course this is just on the eth chain alone right this is not the other nine chains that's just the eth chain right polygons have got even more uh, in terms of uh, the amount that's actually been minted so far. Uh, so pretty crazy. So you can see how early this is on Ethereum. It is still very early. Um, and so it's going to be crazy to see this. And of course, we've got this, uh, if you see this yellow line, we've got this yellow line here. It gives us the future cumulative ca uh, claimables and you can see it going up. So when will we hit 10,000 uh, that will actually be in the market? Uh, future claimable, we'll have this by the uh, by uh, September. 
we're going to have 10 trillion hit. But look how it accelerates. It accelerates all the way in. Um, and of course, after that, after September, all the way into uh, March 24. Uh, so what's that? September, October, November, December, uh, six months later, right? Six months later, we jump from 10 trillion claimable up to uh, 31 a trillion claimable. Uh, so that's kind of the play there. Uh, it's pretty big. But in any case, so we're going to have different things happening to the price during this period of time. Uh, I suspect that over time, uh, subject to demand, uh, we will see the, the average price lower, obviously, as inflation goes up. But that can only be offset by uh, demand, right? The, the only way price can be offset in relative terms to ship, for example, is the demand factor, right? So it would have to do something spectacular in that, that point of view. Uh, and outplay the ship community over time on average over time. So it's going to be interesting to see that. Now, obviously, there can be short term up run ups and run downs, uh, you know, parabolics coming in. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. Now, if we compare it with Shiv and with Hex, for example, uh, now remember, Hex is a store of value pr project, whereas this is a, 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 a means of payment, a, you know, a, a currency type of uh, play. Then, of course, you're expecting a lot more debts to come in and use all this sort of stuff here at the moment. So, we could expect different parabolic rises and uh, decreases uh, in this chart over this period of time. But I'm suspecting that once we get past, I don't know, once we get past seven months, maybe up to 14 months, we could see quite a bit of price action in this chart, even with more volume out uh, because there's more players in the, in the play. There's more demand. And that's what we could might reasonably expect. And of course, this might end up timing with the back end of 23 uh, with the pivot of the Fed market and maybe the next boom, right, running into the next boom market. So there is potential opportunity in there. Obviously, we're speculating based on uh, those assumptions, but that's kind of where we might see some action in here in the medium term. Now, you got to remember, by the time we get to here, after a year, we could have 30% uh, of that 500 trillion. So what's that? Uh, maybe 200 trillion or something in the mineable. It won't be in the market, be mineable, and that would be looking out into the future. Uh, right, so uh, of this eight-year program, we'll be one year into it, but with a lot of the mining stuff coming up in the future, because remember, it's going to be pushed out 437 days and probably be slightly higher than that as people mint out further there. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see. Uh, so at the moment, we're only at two trillion, but if we look at actually this, this, these candles coming out, uh, let's just go to uh, let's go to the end of the year here. We're expecting another um, another was it uh, we're expecting another 700 and 57 uh, billion is in coming out by the 31st. And if, of course, we jump to the next day, we're at 828, right? So we're expecting quite a bit of uh, Zen to still come out. That's around about, uh, uh, we've got 134 tr uh, billion that day. Uh, let's, let me get the numbers right. Yeah, so that's right. So set, we're looking at another 757 uh, uh, billion. And of course, we're at 2 trillion at the moment. So that will get us closer and closer to the 3 trillion by the end of the year. And of course, you can see that uh, we're, we're slowly, uh, we have quite a ramp up here right into the 19th of January. We're expecting another two and a half trillion. Uh, so that would get us up to what? Uh, four and a half trillion uh, by the time we're in at the 19th of, uh, of, the, of January there. Then we start to see it sort of uh, slow down a little bit there all the way in. Uh, by the time we get to uh, this big candle here uh, coming out, we're probably uh, the 18th of May. Uh, we're looking at seven trillion coming out. So it'd get us to nine trillion. Uh, so you can sort of see how that plays out. We've got a big gap here. Look how many low claims are in here all the way. This is just at the moment. Obviously, it's going to change over time. Uh, the people are going to keep doing those short, short mintings. Uh, we expect more candles here. Uh, but we can see how low this green, these green daily candles are with the yellow, the orange there being the accumulative uh, amount of mintable coins. And then we start ramping up. By the time we get to the end of August, we start getting people that are doing the medium uh, to long-term minting. And we start to see all these daily green candles, mint, 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 mint. So we have got the long players here. And this is the best game for getting the most volume. And, of course, if you think about it, we're only 6% into it, 6% uh, into it, then this is early days. This is early days all the way through uh, to the first year if we get up to, uh, you know, if we extrapolate the current minting uh, pace at 30%, that's still early days. I'm not sure we'll get that, that high, uh, but that's kind of uh, just a, a, an easy extrapolation there. Uh, that's some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, so it's actually really early days. Now, this comes back to, to Jack Levin. So what does Jack Levin say? What's your strategy, Jack? And Jack will say, oh, just mint out long. Mint out long. He's saying mint out long. And everyone's trying to play the short game. Uh, you know, got people like Trayvon in there. And good luck to you because you're playing the short game. And you're going, ha, I did this early on. I got an early. And now I'm, I've minted these 25 wallets. And now I'm making 300 bucks net profit. Uh, you know, like that. So you people are playing that game. That's a valid game. 
a lot of people playing it and, and it's not playing out for them as well. Uh, just depends on the price chart at the time. Um, but of course, Jack Levin saying, no, 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 no. This is an inflation game. You've got to get the inflation as much of it as possible. And so what does he do? He mints out long. He mints early. He mints long. He mints regular. So he's minting every weekend, cheap gas fees, and he's minting it out, minting out, 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 out. He's trying to get as much to the inflation as he can. Uh, and that's the play. That's the play there. And of course, uh, so it's going to be interesting. So we've got the big inflation getting early. We've also got the potential for uh, the, maybe the parabolics start coming, uh, you know, apart from the short game with the NFTs that are coming up. But in the med medium term, they start coming in. Maybe that seven to 14 month period, we start to see some pretty interesting price action there. And maybe that times also uh, with the end of the Fed rate and, of course, the beginning of some sort of bull market in crypto. We'll see how that plays out. But that's kind of the bigger medium term view. view. But let's jump over to the short term game. And, of course, the short term game is the fact that uh, we've got this rise over the last couple of days. And why is that rising? Uh, because the Zen NFTs are coming out. So we just talked about inflation. Uh, uh, you know, the end game being about 512 trillion, but we've got deflation coming in now. Uh, so, uh, Zen NFTs and deflation, and this is a little bit of a game play because the Zen NFTs are really, if you think about it, uh, they're like futures contracts. And uh, there's two types of future contracts there's stuff where you just settle by cash, and it's stuff that you have to settle by asset. And of course, this is really like an asset settlement and a futures contract. Um, and of course, uh, this is kind of a bit tricky, right? But uh, in any case, it's, we just call it NFT, uh, but that's kind of where it's playing at this stage. And uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to burn, uh, depending on which uh, NFT you get, you're going to, if you get the uh, the top ones, you're going to end up burning them, right? So let's jump to that quickly um, and uh, have a look at this. So uh, we've got, this is the NFTs that are coming out. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the timing in a second. Uh, and of course, we've got the three categories, the Apex, We've got the limited and the collector here. So these are three different types of NFTs. And the top ones is the ones that we're focused on in particular. Now, all of these have value. Uh, this is the top ones we're going to be looking at because this is the one that's uh, particularly going to uh, be big deal on the burning and, of course, deflation side of Zen, even though we've talked about uh, that big inflationary side. Now, how does this play out? Uh, we've got the Zen unicorn at the top there. There's only going to be 100 of those NFTs. But guess what? You need 10 billion Zen to get them. 10 billion Zen to get them. So crazy, crazy. Um, so... Why would someone take this NFT? I'm going to burn my 10, my 10 billion Zen that I either minted or bought off the market, or maybe a mixture of the both. Well, the, the thing is that when you do this, you're going to give up your C rank uh, that you did, or if you did have one, that is, assume you didn't buy on the market. And of course, you're going to get your new C rank. And of course, uh, you're going to get new C rank, and you're going to be able to get uh, the, the minting from this NFT, right, in the future. And it's going to, it could be pretty lucrative, right? So it's going to be pretty fun to see that. But the thing is, what the NFT allows you to do, it allows you to trade that NFT. So you can't trade a mint at the moment. You've got to wait for your mint to mature and then you claim it. Uh, but what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to uh, trade this. And therefore, it starts to bring in future value. Where have we seen this before? Uh, we've seen this in the perpetuals, right, with the ownership tokens of uh, hex stakes. It's kind of like that, right? People can start to value the future because they can trade these. They can trade these. Now, what does that mean also for price? It means that they can trade at, at wild values. They can tr trade at uh, pr bring in a lot of the future value of the, the mint that's due, or they can uh, they can discount them as well. And maybe the, the price is burning. Now, obviously, if the price of Zen goes up over time, these NFTs potentially are worth more, right? Because the minting Zen in them is uh, the implicit intrinsic value is worth more. And so they can potentially go up. So it's going to be fun to see that. Now, that's just the base case for this. Obviously, they could there be other uh, other depths and uh, expansions of the ecosystem that potentially could be played for this as well. So it's going to be pretty fun to see that we've got the total supply of uh, issues. There's going to only be ten thousand of these NFTs of particular interest is the Zen unicorns, which is going to be a hundred of those. And of course, at the moment we've got two trillion in supply. If, if all hundred were taken up, that's one trillion, right? And therefore, you've only got one trillion left at the moment. But of course, we know there's a couple more trillion coming down the pathway. Uh, we've got 750 a billion more coming before the end of the year. Uh, so we know that there's more coming down the pipeline. So the market's got to absorb that, right? It's got to absorb that. So that's kind of the play there at the moment. Now, the count of VMU. So VMU just means a wallet in, in the bulk Zen mint is 100. So you can get 100 addresses or more. I think it goes up to about 128 or something like that. And of course, uh, you're going to get that future NFT mint uh, out the back end there. And so uh, maybe the market's going to price that at some stage. We'll see. And of course, uh, you're going to get a certain C rank for that as well. Uh, so it's going to be fun to see this play out. Obviously, we've got exotics underneath that too. There's 900 of those. You need 5 billion Zen to mint those. So 
So now you can see uh, why the market's kind of getting excited here uh, for this. And why do I say it's kind of like a futures uh, with an adult asset sentiment is because people can price the future in with this mint because they can trade it as though that mint has actually been realized and they can use the underlying Zen uh, price to kind of price that. And now there's risk in that, of course, uh, is that, you're, uh, that something is only as good as the last buyer, right? And you're hoping that the intrinsic value can hold up. Uh, but of course, people sell things below cost all the time. We see that all the time. People uh, go below market. So uh, you've got to you know, take on that risk, but the reward may be pretty handsome as well. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that because this is tradable, this NFT, maybe even if you've held the NFT to, to uh, uh, maturity, you can mint all the Zen, and then you can keep the C-rank NFT just as a bit of pride and joy. Or maybe somebody else says, hey, I'm willing to pay you a little bit for that Zen NFT C-rank just for nostalgic sake. So there might be a bit of that going on. I'm not sure how much, but uh, because a lot of the early C-ranks are gone. But maybe because it's a Zen Unicorn NFT, it's like there's only 100 of these, so maybe that has more value and people will price that in. So we're going to see some interesting stuff happen with this and maybe also other pro products in the ecosystem expand. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see this play out. Now, if the end game, of course, is for this to be a, a medium exchange, a payment system uh, rather than a store of value focus, uh, then we expect to see a lot more debts building on. And we have heard of uh, projects, teams talking about building with the Zen, uh, Zen token there because it has high amount of inflation, high number of liquidity, and, of course, if you can get some burn into the game as well, uh, particularly in the short, medium term, uh, this could have some excitement in the future. So it's going to be fun to see that. Now, obviously, uh, the market's already anticipating a bit of excitement around this Zen NFT launch and the burn and getting deflation in the chart, which would help lift the price, particularly in the short term. Uh, remember, a lot of these times they, they happen for the short term, but you've got to wait for the, the medium term price parabolics up further in the future. You typically have to wait for that once a lot more inflation is flushed out, even with the burn, right? But if this burn is dramatic, we don't know what it's going to be. If it is dramatic, uh, then obviously in the short term, we could have this price of being doing some pretty interesting stuff uh, as well. In, in any case, you can see the market starting to move up for that. And of course, we expected audits today. So uh, audits today, uh, Z, uh, Jack Levin had a Zen NFT pre-launch party, and uh, they had a good discussion about uh, the early audit updates that they had. So let's get out of here, and I'm going to post this link in the, uh, in the chat there if you want to go check it out. Um, and uh, so you can check that out but in any case I wanted to bring the update here so uh, 18 hours ago uh, Jack Levin says uh, received partial audit report waiting for a complete version we'll know more tomorrow uh, so he gave a further update in this Twitter space here uh, with CN NFT pre-launch we're going to listen to just a small excerpt of that right now so listen very carefully this is about the launch of uh, the audit update and the launch dates uh, for the Zen NFTs and the deflation and uh, this is turning out to be quite the fun experiment to follow. And like I say, this is a possible play. Uh, this is focused on a medium of exchange as opposed to a store value like Hex and other, other projects like that. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this experiment plays out as well. So let's listen to uh, Jack Levin on the audit and, of course, the, the launch time frame. Now, there is more detail uh, in, the, in the Twitter space around the practicality of the launch. Uh, but uh, let's get to the you know, two key things here. Um, <clears throat> a few words about the audit. So we're using the same company, Certec, um, and Certec uh, has has been doing a lot of audits for many, many, many cryptocurrency projects. I think maybe 2,000 projects that they have done. Zen is actually ranked pretty close to the top. It's ranked somewhere around 100 in terms of its, um, um, I guess, the code completeness and friendliness and not having any bugs. Now, Yesterday, we received the preliminary report, and apparently what Certic decided to do, they decided to audit Zen contract, the original contract again. So we got the second audit for the Zen contract. Now it's audited twice. And the second audit uh, reported no issues, um, and it was a different engineer who looked at it. And they reported uh, pretty much there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it actually gives me even more confidence in Zen being secure as an ERC-20 token. So we're, we're waiting for Zen FT audit uh, com being completed either today or tomorrow, probably. And we're in, in constant communication with their team. So they're looking at uh, Zen FT, that SOL, which is the SOL is the extension for the solidity, which is the language that is used to create 
the uh, distributed uh, blockchain projects on, on EVM, obviously. So we're hoping uh, to get something either today or tomorrow. And once we get this final audit, we will be able to look at any issues, if there are any issues, and then correct. Hopefully it's going to be minor, uh, minor corrections that we need to make. And when we do, which will take a day or two again, our tentative timeline to launch is sometime right after Christmas still. So we're hoping 27th, 28th, 29th, that's my uh, target to launch. All right, so there we are. You heard uh, audit expected. They've had a partial audit in. Expect for audit by maybe tomorrow, uh, the launch date, 27th, 28th, 29th. Uh, they're going to do that in a certain format as well, based on a block height. Um, so we're going to see all that play out as well. The other thing, of course, is don't forget when people go to do mint any NFTs, uh, there could be a lot of uh, people in at the same time. The gas fees could be for AI, particularly on the e-chain, which they're launching first. Uh, just take into account those practicalities if you're involved. Now, obviously, nothing on this channel is investment advice. Do your own due diligence. Uh, but this is going to be interesting to watch this project uh, play out. So it's going to be fun to see that. Now, the other thing, of course, is just to wrap that up, is that... Uh, you know, uh, if we've got the 27th, 28th, then 29th, uh, then we can reasonably expect another half a billion, half a trillion uh, Zen to come out by then. So that would get us up to about two and a half trillion in the marketplace approximately. Now, only a certain amount of that makes it itself into the liquidity pool. And of course, uh, given the current uh, price pump at the moment, uh, we might reasonably expect the price to pump quite hardly. We'll see how that goes. Nothing is certain in crypto, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see the next few days all the way up to, uh, say, this day here, the 29th, if it launches there. And uh, whether the price can actually hold up uh, past that as well, if there's a really super high uptake of NFTs, a uh, real big decrease in the liquidity pool, uh, we may see that. We may see that hold up for a little while longer. Uh, but just remember that often people uh, may not just be sell the news, but if the burn is super high, uh, then maybe there's not that much in the actual liquidity pool. Remember, we've got like $2 trillion at the moment, and there's only uh, you know only a certain amount in the liquidity pool at the moment. So last time in the main USD pair, there was about 60 uh, 65 billion or so. Um, and uh, uh, so just, yeah, it's kind of, you got to take into account all the liquidity as well. All right, so cool. That is pretty much our coverage of Jack Levin. I said we're going to deep dive a bit deeper there um, as well. Uh, now you can find, I've done two videos on Zen with dashboards and all the links. You can find them in our Discord and the Pulse Chain Project if you want to get a more detail there as well. Uh, I'll post this uh, Zen NFT in the chat there if you want to check that out as well. Uh, and uh, let's go for gold on that one. Now, the dashboard, of course, the links are in the Discord if you want to find that on the Pulse Chain projects uh, there as well. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is after my live stream, and, of course, uh, the, finally the audit did come out. And uh, here it is from uh, Jack Levin. This was about eight hours ago. And, of course, I'm just posting this on the back end of my live stream update uh, just to uh, complete that up. Of course, here we've got uh, Surtec reporters in, one medium issue resolving as the NFT. So that was it. Now we can see the fourth one there, critical, no, no issues, major, no issues. And of course, the median there, one unresolved, a medium risk a may not pose a direct risk to a user's funds, but they can affect the overall functioning of the platform. No doubt it'll fix that up. And of course, the minor there, four unresolved, minor risk there as well. So you probably go through and probably tick all these off. Uh, so pretty easy. Uh, and uh, what else? He didn't make a mention uh, an hour later, uh, approximately, that uh, they also had preliminary uh, review there on the Zen Crypto links as well. So that's kind of cool. So Zen Crypto Audit 2. So there's actually had two audits there from uh, Certec. Good news of that Certec audit, the original is Zen contract twice. And now it will it, it has a double verified uh, to be solid. So uh, very cool. Now we have it double verified to be solid. So looking really good. And of course, uh, still, uh, I guess the expectation is around about the 27th, 29th uh, for the launch. And of course, it's going to be based on some sort of block height. So we'll wait uh, for more news but that pretty much it hope you enjoyed the deep dive into zen today uh cheers bye